today we're here, the theme of today's demonstration, Baltimore and New Jersey, same struggle, same fight. We're here today to show solidarity with the people of Baltimore who have been fighting hard for justice for Freddie Gray. And let there be no mistake, if there had not been an uprising in Baltimore, we would not be talking about Freddie Gray today. And if there had not been an uprising, that prosecutor would not have charged those officers because Freddie Gray was not the first. He was one of a dozen in just the last two years. So we're here today to say we demand justice for Freddie Gray, but we also demand justice for the Freddie Grays here in New Jersey. We have the case right standing next to me is the mother of Jerome Reed, who you saw on videotape get out of the car with his hands open, no weapon in his hands, and he was shot to death, shot 10 times at point blank range and killed. We have uh, next to Jerome Reed's mother, next to Sheila Reed, is Michelle Kamal, the mother of Abdul Kamal, who was fired upon 15 times by Irvington police, hit 10 times. What did he have in his hand? A cell phone. That's all he had in his hand. He was killed because he had a cell phone in his hand. And standing next to Michelle Kamal, the mother of Abdul Kamal, is Regina Ashford, the mother of Kashad Ashford, who was shot nine times in the head. We have had enough. Enough. Enough is 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 enough. What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Ready. Ready. Trying to go out two by two. We're going to go down 
Everybody, I hope everybody can hear this. We're going down the broad market, and then we're going to come back. We're going to broad market and back. We're not going all the way to the federal bill. We're going to broad market and back. Yes. Now, the people in front, you got to take your time because you got people of different ability behind you. So they all can't walk the same way you walk. We got to be outside. Of all right. Yes. Uh, yeah, a little bit behind. We're going to do the call and response, right? Yes. All right. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Now. When do we want it? Now. Ready. Ready. Gray. Ready. Gray. Ready. Gray.
Rashad! 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 Justice!
What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. No Stop police brutality! 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 anything. 
And again, I'd like to thank everyone for, for Jerome and for Sean, which is my other son, and for Manil, which is my, my husband. I'd like for everyone to continue to fight and continue to stay gathered with us in touch with, with Pop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Yeah. And now, Kashad's sister is going to speak. Give her a hand. This is Kashad Ashford's sister. How you doing? Thank everyone for coming out. Um, I'm Kashad Ashford's sister. That was my little brother. Um, basically, my family, we want answers. We still haven't had any answers. We don't know what they're hiding. But we want answers, and we're not going to stop. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to fight with the other mothers because, you know, to lose a child, that's the worst feeling in the world. And, like, I just want to support my mother every way I can. And I'm my brothers. I'm the person who always saves them. So it's hard for me, just as well as it's hard for my mother to hold my mother up. She got to hold me up, too. And it's sickening. It's sickening to have to bury your child. And I just, I just really want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Regina, and thank you, Cecile. And um, I want to make sure that uh, folks talk to you before you leave today. Where's Sharif Amin Hotep? Sharif Amenhotep was in Baltimore this week. Give him a big hand. He's eyewitness. He's going to give us a report. Black power. Black power. No justice. No peace. No racist. Police. Stop police brutality. Stop police brutality. In the black community. Peace, family. Sharif Amenhotep. Black power. Like brother, our chairman, Larry Ham said, we went to Baltimore. We went down there, family. When I saw the news, how they was vilifying our youth, making them out to be the criminals because they standing up against murder That's right. of their own. That's right. And they took a stand on behalf of us. Right. When many black men are being afraid, our children standing for us. That's right. And when I see the news and they talking about deploying 1,500 National Guards down there and 5,000 additional police to go deal with our youth. How can I be a man sitting on my couch right. or on Facebook right. while they threaten to do harm right. to our youth? Right. So I had to go down to Baltimore. Right. I had to go stand with our youth and to give them guidance and direction and fight on their behalf and give up my life if I have to. Right. So in being in Baltimore family, it was a beautiful experience. It was a very intense experience, something like I have never experienced before in my many years of rallying and protest. I saw a sense of unity and urgency of our people who were ready to do something, ready to do something about our people. Black lives really matter when they're killing us. That's an attack on black humanity, and they wasn't hearing it. So they showed both sides. They showed the alternative to how we have to fight this struggle. Because Freddie Gray is us. We, we know right here in North New Jersey, we done seen our sense of Freddie Gray, I say almost more than any other, That's other right. state That's right. in this country. That's right. we, we can't forget, we can't get amnesia, family. That's right. We done witnessed and experienced Freddie Gray on a consistent basis here in North. That's right. We can't forget about our own Abdul Kamal was shot 15 times, right. family, right here in Essex County, right. in Irvington, New Jersey, and them police got let off the hook. That's right. We can't forget about Michael Newkirk and Rashid Rashad Fuquan Moore, who was killed by Thomas Ruan, a North police Talk who's about on the force today. Right. Talk about Come on, family. Right. He's still on the force. Right. He got two homicides, Talk family. There's no statute of limitation to murder. That's right. We That's still right. want justice right here. That's right. But family, this is not an event. The revolution, this struggle we wage is not an event. That's right. This is a process. That's this is right. an ongoing war that they have waged upon us. Right. And we 
must continuously fight. Our battle gear must be on because they're killing more of us here than they is over there in Afghanistan, Iraq, and countries of war. Our people are dying in these streets, being murdered and killed in these streets. And where is our black men taking a stance against that? Where is our black men that's going to lead our youth who are ready to fight? That's right. What are you going to do with that family? We have that energy of the youth. They want to fight back. They want to strike back. And if we don't give them other alternative means, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see more rises like Baltimore in this country. Because believe it, family, those charges is not enough. Charging them is not enough. We want them to be indicted. We want them to be go to jail. Something we have not really seen in this country. We have not really seen police to go to jail for these crimes that they have been committing on our people. So let us not go to sleep. We got work to do. This struggle is ongoing. It's protracted and it's continuous. And we need to keep the pressure on their behind. Black power and all power to the people. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Now listen, this is very important. Move in a little bit, because I don't want anybody to miss this. Tomorrow, at 6 o'clock, we're having a meeting at Abyssinian Baptist Church. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Everybody that's here, I want you to be at Abyssinian tomorrow at 6 o'clock. 224 West Kinney Street is right over here is where... Pop normally meets on Thursdays. But the reason I want every person that's here to be there tomorrow is because the Justice Department is coming to Newark for its first community engagement on the federal monitor that's going to be placed over the Newark Police Department. That's right. That's right. There were so many cases of police misconduct, violation of constitutional rights, use of excessive force, and corruption. The Justice Department was called in because we used to bring all these cases to the ACLU. The ACLU couldn't handle all the cases they were bringing. So finally, the ACLU petitioned the Justice Department to come in and investigate the Newark Police Department. You want to talk about Michael Brown? Well, we can talk about Michael Newkirk. That's right. That was shot in the head right. over there in the North Ward. Right. You want to talk about Eric Garner? We can talk about Warren Lee, right. who was That's strangled right. to death right. on Vanderpool and Sherman. Right. You know, you want to talk about Freddie Gray, we can talk about Rashid Fuquan Moore shot to death while sitting in a car that wasn't moving on the corner of Springfield Avenue and 14th Street. You know, you want to talk about uh, Rakia Boyd, we can talk about Strawberry Daniels who was shot in the head on the corner of Clinton and Uh, Chadwick Avenue in Newark. Uh, You want to talk about uh, Ayanna Jones? We can talk about Tasha Mays. Before Amadou Diallo, they shot Tasha Mays so many times that they couldn't count the number of bullets. They killed her and she was pregnant and they killed her unborn child. I knew that she was, I knew her and her mother used to live right up here in what used to be Hillman. It's not there no more, right? Hill Manor on the corner of now Martin Luther King and uh, West Kenny. So for every case people can cite in other places, we can cite cases here. Well, the Justice Department came in, they did their investigation, and what did they find? They found that the North police violated people's constitutional rights on a daily basis. What did they find? They found that not only did they violate people's constitutional rights, but they violated black people's constitutional rights more than anybody else's constitutional rights. What else did they find? They found that...
that the North Police Department did engage in excessive force, did engage in police brutality, did unjustly kill people that were unarmed. And on top of supposed to be stopping the flow of drugs and guns in our community was taking the drugs and guns from people they arrested and out here selling them on their own to make money. They found that this is no secret. There's no secret knowledge. They came, they had a press conference, and they told the whole world about it. And what they said was that the U.S. Attorney, Paul Fishman, said that the North Police Department was going to be placed under federal control. Now, what does that mean? That means it's good, the court is going to appoint a master. That's what it's called in legal terms, a master over the North Police Department. They, the title is Federal Monitor, but all the authority is in the Federal Monitor. He's a master over the North Police Department. And they're going to implement a consent decree. What is a consent decree? It's simply an agreement right. between the Justice Department and the City of North on all the changes that they need to make to correct all these problems in the North Police Department. So for the first time, this is the first time, the Justice Department is going to talk publicly to the community tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And we need everybody to be there. Don't come there at 6. Come at 5.30. Be there early. Because they're only going to be there from 6 to 8. So we need everybody that's here to come back tomorrow. Come to Abyssinian. 224 West Kinney Street. Try to get there 5.30, 5.45. So we'll all be in the room when the Justice Department gets there. And they're not just going to lecture. After they tell us everything that the monitor is supposed to do and everything that's in the consent decree, they're going to give you an opportunity to have input, to question, to make comments, to make other recommendations. They're sending people up here to listen. This is going to be the first of five meetings. They're going to have one meeting in each ward of North. And so they came, they asked, well, they said, well how do we do this? I said, start at Abyssinia. That's in the central ward. It's in the Central Ward, start there. That's where the epicenter of police brutality was that started the 1967 rebellion. So they'll be here tomorrow. So we want everybody, go home, get on the phone, especially if you know people who live in the Central Ward, because that's really who need to be there, the Central Ward people. But we want everybody there. Whether you live in Newark or not, we want you to see this process up close and personal so be there tomorrow at six o'clock at abyssinian baptist church 5 30 thank you 5 30 at abyssinian baptist church now she was here earlier but she had to leave marilyn zaniga right. is a teacher whose students wrote get well letters to mumia abu jamal how many people know who mumia abu jamal is mumia abu jamal was railroaded accused and convicted of a crime he did not commit and he's been in jail for 32 years he's been in jail he's deathly ill he had diabetes and the prison medical people didn't even know he had how could you be in prison receive routine examination and people don't know you have diabetes that means that they was bull well you know what i mean they try it is a extrajudicial execution it's a medical execution it's a death by neglect they want that brother to die because they they can't handle him they can't let him go but they can't hold on to him he's doing more to expose this corrupt system behind walls than people who are out here free and paid to do it 24 hours a day that's right mumia needs our support but her students heard that mumia was sick they wrote letters, the FOP found out by the letters, jumped right out here, jumped on the Orange Board of Education, and the Orange Board of Education suspended the system. So now we're going to have a teach-in on Wednesday, a teach-in about...
about the Zuniga controversy. It's going to be at the International Faith Ministries. That's 420 Main Street in Orange, New Jersey. That's going to be Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And we want everybody to be there also. And then we want people, and I'll talk about this more later on, but we want people to come to the board meeting where they're going to decide to fire her on May the 12th. Right. They were going to fire her in April, but their timing was wrong. You know, Sun Tzu says timing is everything, right? <laughs> they didn't understand what was going on. The night before they decided they were going to fire, we had 500 people at Bethany Baptist Church. Right. And we told all the people at Bethany to come up to Orange the next day. And they all came up and they stopped the Board of Education from firing her in April. That's right. All them people spoke and they turned the situation around. Her, her own union rep had told her to capitulate, give in, let, let resign, and they won't have to fire you. She had the speech all written, but when the cavalry came to the rescue, she turned her speech around. She said, I'm not giving that speech. No, I'm going to fight this out. So y'all came to the rescue. And we got to keep coming to the rescue, come to each other's rescue. But May 12th is a board meeting. I'll say more about that later on. The most important thing is tomorrow night. Everybody be an Abyssinian tomorrow night so that we can really find out what's going on. And I want to commend the mayor of North, Mayor Ross Baraka, the first time in the 350-year history of the city of North, he signed an executive order to establish a police review board. For 50 years, people in North have demanded a police review board. He signed the executive order to create it on Thursday. Was it Thursday? It was Thursday. He signed the executive order. So we're going to have it's a start. It's not a solution. They got a police review board in New York for 50 years. Some of the worst cases of police brutality. It's it, it still, but but it's as the brother says, it's a start. It's a start and it's a step in the right direction. And the mayor of Newark is taking all the heat himself because ideally it should have gone through the city council and it should have been established through law, through an ordinance. But I'm just guessing, and you know I'm always wrong. But I'm just guessing that there wasn't five votes yeah, on the city council, yeah, you, yeah. you know, to actually yeah. make this thing happen. Yeah, no. So Baraka did it through executive order. That's right. So he going to get all the heat. That's right. The police are going to try to get him under. I wouldn't even be surprised if they try to launch a recall movement or something like that. They certainly will probably try to challenge it in court. But we at least should give a hand to the mayor for doing it by executive order. He did the right thing. Yeah. That's right, we got to stand with him. So tomorrow night, be it Abyssinian. So right now, we had a, I'm, I'm going to call some people at random. I know I always call on the same people. I'm going to call some different people now. The sister ran for the school board. She didn't win, but she surprised everybody by how many votes she got. And I believe she would make a good, sp go good school board member or anything else. Sheila Montague, where you at? Come on, Sheila. Come on and say a few words. Come on. Come on and say something. Come on, Sheila. And you can't be a public official and be shy now. We're going to elect you. You'll be like, run to the mic. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Ham. Um, so my name is Sheila Montague, and I did run for the school board. Um, I just wanted to be a part of the legislation and things that's going on here in the city of Newark in terms of education, in terms of making sure that um, crime is decreased, and also in making sure that we have justice for everyone here in the city. Um, although I didn't win, that's quite all right because um, that has nothing to do with my leadership and the plans that I have for the city of Newark continues as well. Um, I'm glad to be here. I love my city. I was born and raised here, and I'm glad to be a part of POP today and what we're fighting for. Um, you know, I just, I send a lot of prayers up for um, Freddie Gray, um, and even for the moms that were here today. I put a lot of social media effort into trying to get a lot of people here. I hope somebody saw it and came, um, but again, just to reiterate what Chairman Ham just said, please don't let it stop today. Please continue to come out, continue to fight, continue to hold each other up in love, and, um, you know, just continue black power.
Power to the people. I'm going to call somebody else in a minute, but something just came to mind. I want to give props to that prosecutor down there in Baltimore, Marilyn Mosby, who did not take a whole year to charge. It take forever. She stood up, and she deserves to be praised. And she deserved to be praised for the remarks that she made. You need to listen. If you go on Facebook, everybody's posting her speech that she made. Listen to her speech. She was pretty clear, I thought, on how they arrived at what they arrived, the decision they arrived at. But I want to say this. A lot of people are saying that she's a hero. And in a sense, I believe she's a hero. She could have not indicted him. But you know who the real heroes are in Baltimore? The masses of the people that have been protesting and getting arrested and out there in the street. They're the real heroes. Now don't get it twisted. I ain't trying to hate on the sister. I just said she did a good job. But we got to place everything in its proper context. She wouldn't have charged it. Freddie Gray wasn't the first one. Man, that thing was so common. That they call them van rides a nickel ride. A nickel ride. That's what they call it. A nickel ride. It's so common that they don't secure the prisoners and they bounce them around in the back of the van and they beat them in the back of the van. It's a common practice. It's not uncommon. And there was a dozen Freddie Grays. And none of the officers that did to those other Freddie Grays got charged. Why did this Freddie Gray get charged? Because the people of Baltimore raised hell. They made it absolutely clear that if there, if someone is not accountable for his death, they will not be able to carry on business as usual in that city. And I want to say something because all the reporters was asking me today, isn't it terrible that the stores got broke and the fires and the... Of course. It's terrible when something like that had happened. But if y'all was more concerned about broken necks than broken windows, there wouldn't have been no riot in Baltimore. There wouldn't have been no rebellion. There's a rebellion because you're more concerned about stores than people. You're more concerned about money than people. That's why there was a riot. And it went on and on and on until, you know, Freddie Gray wasn't even the worst case. But it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Remember, you put that pot on the stove and the water boils for a while. But it's that one second where water turns to steam and the situation is transformed. Freddie Gray was that one second. They couldn't take it anymore. So we got to be clear when people start talking about who's responsible for the police. If, if it, And this is the other thing. Just because they charge, that don't mean that they're going to be found guilty. You know, everybody out here celebrating and popping Moet and all this other stuff. They ain't even going to trial yet. They ain't even, let me tell you something. We were in a case called the Faison case where the cops were convicted. They were found guilty. And we thought at that point we could celebrate. I'm riding down the highway. I get a call from uh, New Jersey Public News. They said, what do you think about what Judge Lifflin did? I said, well, what did Judge Lifflin do? They said, Judge Lifflin vacated all the guilty verdicts in the Faison case. I didn't even know a judge could vacate a guilty verdict. It ain't over till they in the jail. The lock, the key is in the lock. The key is turned. The door is locked. That's when it's over. It ain't over till they are in the jail. It took us five years to get them cops in the Faison case into the jail. It took three years to get them convicted. Then it took two more years. Let me tell you what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do. They're going to move the case out of Baltimore. They're, they're going to move it out. They're going to move it to some suburb community or some other black community where the people are the walking dead and haven't been keeping up with stuff, you know, and think the police are their friend so that they can try and get a not guilty verdict. They're going to try to 
do all kinds of things to get everything except justice. So I say to the people in Baltimore, y'all got to keep the pressure on. It ain't over till it's over. And the real heroes are those folks that was in the street demonstrating day after day. The real heroes are those people that got arrested, was put in jail. They wouldn't even feed them when they was in jail. Have you been getting the reports? They wouldn't even feed the people after they arrested them and put them in jail. It's horrendous what's going on. So when we talk about heroes, keep in mind the people who actually got in the street. They, they are the real heroes. So I'm going to call now the street counselor. Come on, street counselor. Counsel us and give us some insight here. Power to the people. We fed up. We fed up. We fed up. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. We out here, family. We out here, man. Street council representing the North Anti-Violent Coalition. You know, this is not a feel-good moment. We have to understand that our people is getting murdered in these streets, and they're getting slaughtered in these streets right while the ink is signed on an executive piece of paper. It's still continuing. It's still continuing. How I know, because I, I, I have the opportunity to go inside the New Jersey state prisons in the state, throughout the state of New Jersey, and I know for a fact that a lot of these brothers is broke up in these prisons with no medical care. A lot of these brothers and sisters is falsely charged by these same corrupt uh, cops that's continuing to get these fat checks out here. So we got the Eddie, we got the Eddie Gray, we got the Abdul Kamal, we got the Freddie Gray, pardon me, and, and a whole host of cases. And it's, it's Jose Canunez, sheriff's officer, same thing, ran his brother over, shot him point blank range at South 9th Street. Right there on South 9th Street and 4th Avenue. We was out there. We wrote the Federal Justice Department. The family still no answers. Uh, the sister got up here and talked about uh, she, she, she continued to write, write. Uh, uh, the Ashford family continued to write. No answers. Guess what? We can't wait for them to give us answers. Right. What we got to do is we got to learn what this term is. It's called 1983. It's a civil rights action under the federal statute. What we got to do is we got to have these lawyers, instead of stripping money from our community, we need them to do service in our community or shut them down. We need the lawyers to shut, we need to shut these attorneys down that don't have the damn heart and the, and, and, and the tenacity to really fight for the justice of our people. In order for the effect change, it, it, it takes legislation. In order to effect change, true freedom come with bloodshed. Y'all agree? We know what happened out there in Baltimore. Huh? Yeah, you got, and, I, and, and I'm going to tell them, I'm putting on Newark on notice. They need to stop the construction that's going on in this city. It's not business as usual. Stop stop the construction that's going on in Newark, New Jersey, right now, as of today. If you look at the sea of faces that's in these stores, they don't reflect the young people that work in these stores. And that's a problem. You understand? But they'd rather put us in state pen than Penn State. They ain't giving us a damn job in these in these stores. They need to stop and shut these stores down. We need to shut these stores down. We outraged. These cops continue to get fat checks and don't come to me about this black on black violence. We don't play these black on black kids. We don't pay taxes to these black on black kids that are shooting black on black violence. The reason why black on black violence occurs because it's stem from white on black violence. Let's be very clear. We don't want to talk about it, but let's be very clear. We don't pay people taxes to gun us down. We don't pay them fat checks and, 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 and provide them with the, 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 uh, uh, the armory that they have to shoot us down. Huh? So let's be very clear on the distinction between the two, family. All right, so uh, we out here, man. We got to continue to fight. Rain, sleep, show us uh, snow and shine. And, and, and I love y'all. Power to the people. You know, before they closed it down, I was a frequent visitor to Sheba Temple on Springfield Avenue. Y'all know where Sheba Temple is? Yeah. <laughs> don't act like you don't know now. I know you know. One night I was in Sheba Temple, and I heard this song by Gary Porter. 1960 what? 1960 who? 1960 what? Hey, the Motor City's burning. See, I knew, I knew that Baltimore was coming. I didn't know about Ferguson, but I knew that Baltimore was coming. And when Gary Porter was singing about the uprising in Detroit, 
1967, the same year as the Newark Rebellion. See, the music reflects the times. The music reflects how people are thinking. And I knew as soon as I heard that a popular club song was about the uprising, I knew we were getting ready for a sea change in terms of people's attitude. I want to ask the representative of the new Black Panther Party to come and say a word, then we're going to close it out. Which who, who is going to speak for the new Black The chairman, right? No? That's the chairman, all right? The Minister of Information, give him a hand. New Black Panther Party. All power to the people. All power to the people. We're very short in words. We don't want the media to turn our words around and make this a negative event. We fully support Pop, and we fully support the families that were affected by these tragedies. All power to the people, and continue to fight. And we got your back, people. Thank you. Power for the people. Black power. Black power. Black power. I wish we could stay a little bit longer. <laughs> Because I sure would like to hear some other people speak, but it's already 4 o'clock. And I know y'all won't go home and make some phone calls and tell people to come to Abyssinia tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. But keep in mind that in Baltimore, there's a black mayor, a black city council, a black police director, a black congressman, black board of freeholders. They just like Newark. Everything black. But black people still being killed. Now, we have to contemplate on that. <laughs> Go home and think on it. <laughs> Meditate upon it. That's what they used to tell me. Because in 1967, when we struggled, this used to be an apartheid city. This used to be like South Africa. It was a predominantly black city, and it was a white power structure. And there wasn't a black councilman until 1960. His name was Irvine Turner. That's who Irvin Turner Boulevard was named after. But that's not who we wanted to name Irvin Turner uh, uh, Belmont Avenue after. It was Belmont Avenue. It became Irvin Turner Boulevard. What we tried to do in 1972 was change the name of Belmont Avenue to Malcolm X Shabazz Boulevard. But the city council wouldn't accept Malcolm X. Too black, too strong. So the compromise was Irvine Turner. And I get a brother's props for being the first black councilman. But he remained the only black elected official until 1970. And what happened between 1960 and 1970 and 1967, there was an uprising in Newark. And that's what it took to overthrow the apartheid political power structure. Because Ken Gibson had run in 1966. Newark was all black, but the consciousness wasn't there. They couldn't do it. When 1967, the uprising happened, it was a sea change in people's consciousness. People, people could not run away from racism anymore because the National Guard was camped out at their front door and was going into some people's house because martial law had been declared. So that sea change happened. And we believed at that time that if we would just simply elect black people, as you say, black faces to high places, that everything would be okay. But the police brutality continued. The poverty grew. The unemployment increased. The poor schools continued to exist. And it made us think that obviously just electing people to office is not enough. That we must have a more fundamental kind of change. And that's why there was a riot in Baltimore in 1968. Do you know that there was a rebellion in Baltimore in 68? You know what it was? It was an incident of police brutality. You know who the victim was? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was a victim of police brutality. His assassination was a state-engineered event. And that's a matter of court record. The King family went to federal court in 1999. And the judge ruled. This was the judge ruling. So this ain't crazy Larry Ham talking. 
the judge ruled that Dr. King was a victim of a conspiracy in which 11 intelligence agencies participated. 11 United States intelligence. Go Google it. You don't believe me? Google it. Google Dr. King, uh, federal court case 1999. It's all there. It's a matter of record. In fact, the King family went and met with, was it James R. Ray? Who was the killer? James R. Ray. The King family did not believe that James R. Ray was the assassin. They actually went into the prison and met with him. They did not believe that he was the assassin. And there's evidence pointing to, in fact, they got the person's name. Well, they know, the people in power know who it is. They, they just won't admit it. But Baltimore had a fierce rebellion in 1968. They had to call out the National Guard. And I had a theory that was thoroughly disproved. <laughs> I said all the cities that had rebellions in the 60s would, wouldn't have rebellions. It would be new places like Ferguson. Well, obviously, I was wrong because they had a second uprising. And as long as this police brutality continues, there are going to be more explosions. Right. You can't oppress people. Right. You can't force them to live in poverty. Astronomical rates of unemployment, right. underemployment. You, you can't hold people down for so long. And you know, when the rebellions occur, they don't come in neatly wrapped packages. It's like, it's like a hurricane. It's like Katrina. It bring rain, but the rain is so strong it kill people. That's what a rebellion is like. You can't engineer it. It's a spontaneous uprising. You can't say, okay, don't do this. and do No, it, it's an explosion. And if the explosion is powerful enough, it knocks windows out. It knocks cars over. It sets things on fire. And you don't take any joy out of these things, but this is the price. People have been produced. Predicting Baltimore and predicting Ferguson. It just, it took longer than people thought. And there's going to be more. That's right. So we got to get ready, brothers and sisters. That's right. That's right. So everybody come out tomorrow. I want to thank you for coming out today. You did a good job today. Thank you very much. And let's, let's build this movement. We got to build a movement. That's right. And I think it's coming. I can feel a change coming. You know, we got to build this movement. And um, so everybody, I hope I will see everybody tomorrow at 530 at Abyssinian Baptist Church. Power to the people. Power to the people.